the Congress President in several places and occasions has made it clear that the Congress Party's manifesto will be written following an inclusive process. It will be based on conversations with the people of India. We will ask people, encourage people, motivate people to tell us what they expect of the Congress Party and should the Congress Party form the government, what they will expect from the government. The broad theme under which this manifesto building process will be organized is Jan Awaz, in English, your voice. A 22-member manifesto committee has been constituted. Professor Gowda is the convener of the committee. We have divided this committee into 20 subject groups, each one under one of the members. And the process of consultation has started on the 1st of October. You can call that a soft launch of the consultations. They have traveled to different parts of the country and held both closed door consultations and open house consultations details of which Professor Gowda will share with you presently. For example, I led the subgroup on economic policy and we have held closed door consultations in Delhi in the last two weeks and in Mumbai day before yesterday. We had a huge open house consultation in Mumbai day before yesterday in the famous amphitheater of Bandra Bandstand. We had over 400, 500 people gathered there. One half of them Congress workers, but one half of them general public. We expect that each of our subgroups will hold between eight to 10 consultations, which will mean that through the length and breadth of the country, we will have about 150, 160 consultations. The process is expected to be completed by December. In addition to this process, since we want to involve as many people as possible in this country, we are launching a dedicated website for manifesto ideas, manifesto consultation. As you're aware, in India has an internet user base of about 400 million people. Use of internet is increasing every day. And we think that we must tap into this technology to get ideas from different parts of the country. The website will be demonstrated to you in a few minutes. Just the highlights. You can submit your suggestions in any one of 16 languages. There is a dedicated WhatsApp number, 72920-88245. I repeat, 72920 Double eight two four five. Manifesto inputs can also be sent via a reserved email ID manifesto at the rate of inc dot in manifesto at the rate of inc dot in. We hope that millions of Indians will participate in this process. We want 
Congress workers to participate, of course, but we also want millions of unattached to a political party individuals to participate. Obviously, organizations can also participate, trade unions, trade bodies, student bodies, Mahila groups, they can also participate. But we want to make this as inclusive as possible, as broad-based as possible, and have as many conversations as possible. With these words, I turn the microphone to Professor Gowda, and then uh, the, website. the website will be launched before that. Yes, whoever is in charge of that, please, yeah. Yes, sure. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the website dedicated to the manifesto consultation process. And the larger theme is that your aspirations shape the future of India, your voice inspires change, the Indian National Congress is listening to you. So that's the larger theme of this entire process. What we'll do now is we will just take you through the website itself, and we will also have one um, uh, youngster submit her input into the manifesto process right away. Ready? So we have a young student here who has joined us. So this is the, that, the page that you saw was the opening screen. This is the language screen where you can make your choices. And go ahead and choose English, I suppose. Yeah, and that will take you to, um, go ahead, Akira. Can you enter your inputs? No, no, it's not masked. It's just too small for us to read from here. <laughs> That's all. Can, can you tell us aloud what you just said? Submit it? No, no, just speak. Okay. Pass the Women's Reservation Bill in Parliament. Okay. That sounds like a very constructive manifesto agenda. And as we know, it fits in with the party's commitment. So, excellent. Uh, the next screen, can you go ahead? And your details. Okay. Well, that's fine. We can. Uh, can go okay. Go ahead and finish that. I don't think anyone can read <laughs> at that. Uh, thing. Hindi maybe. Sola Bhasho me. And we're looking forward to your inputs. So please. The idea is to crowdsource inputs. That there are lots of people with wonderful ideas, wonderful experiences. Oh, they're right there it's on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Just submit. Yeah. Um, it's harder here. So we'll, it, it's okay. No. Varun, Varun, can you go back and show the list of 16 languages? Yeah. And just come here and tell us which all are there. Languages? Hmm. I think it is Hindi. Yeah, just a moment. Was that you, vernacular you, difficult to read English? Yes, Hindi, it, it seems Malayalam, Uriya, Gujarati, uh, that would be Tamil, uh, and Malayalam, I said, Bangla, Uriya, uh, Kashmiri. And uh, yes, Madhimpuri, yes. so almost all the languages. Thank you, Pranav. Uh, it's an interesting quiz question for everyone here, <laughs> whether they can identify the 16 languages out there. Anyway, we will now move to a little quick overview of the process that we have already undertaken. Can we just move to that presentation, please? Yes. So this uh, manifesto consultation process was begun on October 1st in Nagpur, and uh, we've continued that across the country. We've had 31 consultations. The 31st is actually going on today in Nagpur, as it turns out, on, um, on uh, Dalit and tribal issues in, uh, and OBC issues in Nagpur. That's happening today. This is the members of the manifesto committee team. We've put up the names, uh, and we will have them on the website in case people want to uh, correspond with us on our specific topics. Uh, uh, Sri Chidambaram is the chairman, and we have a total of 22 members overall. Continue, please. 
Next slide. So we have two kinds of consultations, the public consultations, the kind that took place yesterday in Mumbai in Bandra's amphitheater, and we have uh, expert consultations, which are typically closed-door consultations of the record, but where we draw on inputs from people with tremendous experience in various sectors. Next. Oops. Yeah. The, um, the members of the manifesto committee are supported by the ACC research department and our state research departments. The state research departments are organizing the local consultations in coordination with the Pradesh Congress committees. And the researchers who are part of the ACC research department team uh, support uh, the whole process as rapporteurs, as people who organize the material, and will do additional research so that when the manifesto is actually prepared, everything has been checked and double checked and fact, um, uh, you know, and fact checked, and that's how we are uh, moving forward. So far, while we have had 31 consultations, um, uh, these are the states which have been covered in terms of. Um, uh, where the locations have, um, of, uh, these are covering the locations that have already been covered so far. We will cover the entire country and lots of non-capital cities as well. We're expecting around 70, 80 locations for the overall consultation process. Next. This is just some pictures. This um, is um, in Chandigarh with uh, Sri Bhupinder Huda doing a consultation on agriculture. Next. This is, um, th this is, the same one, or? No, this is Manpreet Singh Badal doing one on, this is, uh, on ex-servicemen. Yeah, next. This is a public consultation organized by Sri Huda in Aligarh. Next. This is one I did with the MSME sector in Bengaluru. This is... Um, Mungekar. Okay, this is Prof. Uh, Dr. Balchandra Mungikar doing a consultation in Vishakhapatnam. I can see that part, so the rest of my eyes are... Uh, you know, um, anyway, this is uh, Selja ji doing a consultation on urban issues in Mumbai. Uh, this is Mr. Mungikar, uh, Prof. Mungikar in Bangalore on education again. This is um, Sri Chidambaram uh, in Mumbai a, few, a couple of days ago. This is the public consultation in the amphitheater. Next. This is the same with a different uh, backdrop. So once again, we welcome inputs across domains from each and every Indian citizen and anyone else. And especially, we look forward to engaging with the people of India, their ideas, their suggestions, so that the Congress Party's manifesto truly is a people's manifesto and that uh, your aspirations are reflected in the party's agenda for governance going forward. Just, uh, just a couple of things, sir. I will ask uh, Pranav uh, to add. Um, the uh, manifesto website is manifesto.inc.in, and the email ID is manifesto at the rate of inc.in. Oh. Yes, and there is a WhatsApp number which we read out a couple of times. Yeah, you want to say, say something? Uh, Hindi, just summarize in Hindi, way. Thank you, Professor Gauda. I hope that this new beginning has been started by the public engagement of social media and digital media. Those people who can't reach our own words, are sitting in the distance, in the small cities, 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 especially the youth, 40 मिलियन लोगों के बारे में कहा जो लोग इंटरनेट से जुड़े हैं वैसे लोग व्हाट्सएप के द्वारा ईमेल के द्वारा अपनी बात हम तक पहुंचा पाएंगे और हम उनके सुझावों को अपने मैनिफेस्टो में शामिल कर पाएंगे और जैसा कि श्री चिदंबरम जी ने कहा कि जब सरकार आती है कांग्रेस की चुनकर तो उन सुझावों से अगर हमसे कोई पूछे कि आप जब आए सत्ता में तो आप क्या करेंगे तो उन सुझावों को हम शामिल कर कर और आगे हमारी क्या घोषणाएं होंगी हमारा क्या आ, लोगों से हमारा वादा होगा उसको हम शामिल करेंगे और ये कांग्रेस के मैनिफेस्टो का हिस्सा होगा जो महत्वपूर्ण नंबर हम शेयर करना चाहते हैं लोगों से फेसबुक के द्वारा और आ, आपके मार्फत से प्रेस के माध्यम से नंबर है सात दो नौ दो शून्य आठ आठ दो चार पाँच मैं दोबारा दोहराता हूँ 
बहत्तर नौ सौ बीस अट्ठासी दो सौ पैंतालीस बहत्तर नौ सौ बीस अट्ठासी दो सौ पैंतालीस और जो ई मेल आई है वो है मैनीफेस्टो मैनीफेस्टो एट द रेट आई एन सी डॉट आई एन दोबारा कहता हूँ एम ए एन आई एफ ई एस टी ओ मैनीफेस्टो एट द रेट आई एन सी डॉट आई एन सो वी हैव द इकोनॉमी वी हैव इंडस्ट्री एंड एम एस एम ईज वी हैव अर्बन अर्बन इशूज वी हैव एग्रीकल्चर एंड एग्रीकल्चरल लेबर वी हैव आर्म सर्विसज एंड रिटायर्ड आर्म सर्विसज पर्सनल we have um, youth sports jobs and skilling we have education we have health care we have foreign policy de- defense and security issues we have um um chashitaru just did one on environment in bangalore and then there's one more on art heritage culture is one more on that theme and uh, how many have we covered <laughs> quite a lot in fact okay so <laughs> basically think of the portfolios we we cover every one of them women women's women, women affairs issues are there as well women and children's issues are there ji he's asking that uh, farm loan waiver was one of the uh, issues that we uh, promises that we promised to include We'll yeah, in the uh, plenary session. Yeah, yeah. Suggestions will come up. We'll take your suggestion on board. At the moment, as I said in Bombay, Mumbai, I have a notebook where I'm writing the suggestions. I'm not reading out any promises yet. That stage will come closer to the election. At the moment, we are taking down your suggestion. Your suggestion that yes. farm loans must be waived will be taken in record. do we intend to have an uh, app uh, application also i don't think so no we have got a website website hai straight away access the website and, and give your suggestion in 16 languages and what is the deadline till last date when people can submit there is no deadline as i said the process of consultation will go well into december and perhaps even flow into january so there is enough time for people to give their suggestions there is no deadline as such total is 22 members including us 22 the website is manifesto.inc.in jan awaz is the, the logo, theme the logo. is a is a theme it's the theme your voice your voice for me but we expect and hope to finish the consultations process by the end of the calendar year there may be a little spill over into early january but after that we will compile actually this will be an ongoing process compiling the inputs that have come organizing them uh, fact checking and thinking through the policy implications the budgetary implications and then laying out a draft which we will submit to the manifesto committee that will uh, be taken up by the core committee and the parties working committee before an actual manifesto is finalized and launched we have just a moment ek pehle ye kharam kar le isse kar le uske baad kar le aate hain anuja uh, from wind there no no some consultations are taking place with party workers i had one in shivaganga 10 days ago where i had called booth level delegates and party workers exclusively and i asked them for over two and a half hours what your suggestions are pccs are also holding consultations at their level so party workers inputs will be a big part of the input sanjay there from jagran sanjay ji i think manifestos are important manifestos are important at least to hold the government to account if the party comes to office so i think every party is obliged to tell the people what it will do if it comes to government so i don't think you should diminish the importance of manifestos 
and go by Joomla like promises. Sunil, you have a related question? Yeah, so I I'll come back. See, when the manifesto will be released will depend upon the decision of the Congress Working Committee. Our job is to prepare a draft manifesto. Ultimately, it has to be approved by the Congress's Working Committee. Now, the structure of the manifesto, well, from election to election, the structure changes. I'm aware of the structure of the 1991 manifesto. I think there is a subsequent manifesto also which made some time-bound promises. So let's see. Let's see how it pans out. Yeah, just Anurag, one second. Just I, just want to, I just want to add to that. Uh, the Congress president has mentioned uh, that he would like to see uh, timetables. Okay, so in the, in the spirit of what you're saying, he says, what might we be able to do in the first year? What might be the budgetary allocation? So that has been part of the oral discussion that we've had around this. But the formal um, timetables will be decided by the working committee if it chooses to go through that process. We have Anuragji from IBN 7. As I said, at the moment, we are only writing down the suggestions. We're not reading from a hymn book. <laughs> Therefore, let's first write down the suggestions, and then when the manifesto is released, you will know what the Congress party is promising and what it is not promising. Janind from ABP. Manifesto is No, the present exercise is the Congress party's manifesto. I'm sure other parties also are preparing their manifestos. I don't know. I don't know the answer, whether there will be a pre-election common minimum program or a post-election common minimum program. It's for the leaders of the party to decide if a coalition is formed before election. At the moment, I'm only concerned with preparing the Congress party's manifesto. I have no doubt that other parties are also preparing their manifestos. Sir, our friends also want to ask questions from other related topics. Do you it like depends to? Depends on the topic. I am not promising an answer. <laughs> well, this is a familiar story. Every five years before the election, the BJP will try to polarize views on Ram Mandir. You know the Congress Party's position. The Congress Party's position, as I understand this, the matter is before the Supreme Court, and everyone should wait until the Supreme Court decides the questions before the Supreme Court. I don't think we should jump the gun. Ajay? And I see. Uh, my question is uh, I'm also planning to join the Democratic Party in the US, the Republican <laughs> Party in the US, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bolsonaro's party in Brazil, the Communist Party in China. I have several options around the world. <laughs> we have Ravi from Z, sir. If, if you make that statement in public, it will border on contempt of the Supreme Court. So my advisors don't make that statement. The Supreme Court will decide when to hear the case. We don't decide when the Supreme Court is hearing the case. Ji. Shashi Tharoor did not make that comment. Shashi Tharoor, six years ago, quoted that comment from a writer in the Caravan magazine. So I think uh, uh, between the time the comment is made and the time it is, gets uh, publicity, everything changes. The author changes, the context changes, the words change. Please go back. And Sashi Tharoor was clarified. He was quoting an article in the Caravan some six years ago. It's a complete non-issue. Yes. It's not only too early to comment, there's only sketchy information available. 
but there must have been some grave reason why the deputy governor delivered that speech. And he, in the footnote, he says that he is grateful to Dr. Ujit Patel for encouraging him to explore the subject. So I think the matter is serious enough. And it would be best if the RBI and the government don't talk across each other through lectures. <laughs> We've had two already. Instead of talking across to each other through lectures, it might be better if the time-honored practice of the finance minister and the governor of RBI meeting often in private and talking issues. We have done that in the past and it's worked well. Why are people delivering lectures across each other? I don't know. Jeeva. Ordinances don't go to parliament. Ordinances are decided by the executive government. So if someone is asking for an ordinance, it's for the prime minister to respond, if he will respond at all to any issue. Sunil, let it be the last question. Sir, I just want to clarify because you gave some interview in Tamil, for Tamil TV channel where you said Rahul Gandhi is not the prime minister. I think you should go back and uh, listen to that interview. No, I'm just asking you because if Rahul Gandhi is not the prime minister candidate. I think you should go back and listen to that interview. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Gordon.